From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Oren Vance. Oren Vance? Yeah, you sent me up to Arsening seven years ago, you remember? Huh? Oh, yes, I think I do. Uh, you know, I thought a lot about coming out and killing you, Dollar. Mm-hmm. But instead, I'm going to do you a favor. Yeah? Yeah. I think maybe you and I can work out something. You know, this sounds like double talk to me. Don't you give me any routine, Dollar. I heard them all. I'm calling you with information about the Todd case. Todd? I don't remember. Well, look it up. It cost your company $75,000. Hey. Hello? Vance? Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Four State Insurance Company, Wilmington, Delaware. Attention, Mr. Don Freed, Chief Investigator Claims Division. Since your office authorized me to conduct certain inquiries based on new information supplied by Oren Vance, I am billing you accordingly. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Todd matter. Expense account item one, $1.85. One phone call to Don Freed in Wilmington, Delaware to discuss the burglary that had occurred six months before in the Long Island home of Norman Todd. The case was a complete stalemate. The police and the insurance investigators had been unable to locate the thieves or trace any of the loot, which included jewelry, silver, and wearing apparel that had been taken from the residence. I requested Don to forward whatever details they had, along with an accurate list of the stolen items and complete descriptions. Expense account item two, two dollars, cab fare. To and from the office of International Adjustment Bureau, where I refresh my memory concerning Oren Vance. A good look at the files, and I remembered him well. Back in 1947, he'd been involved in a well-engineered swindle of the Seaman Clothing Company. Almost got away with it. And it was my investigation and testimony that finally put him behind the bars. Hi. Huh? Vance? Yeah. Oh, hello, Dollar. You haven't changed a bit. You have. Yeah, sure I have. You took seven years of my life away from me. Did you do what I told you to on the phone? People like you don't tell me what to do, Vance. Come on in. Oh, sure. Thanks. Nice place you got here. Yeah, I like it. Sit down. Tell me what's on your mind. Look, Dollar, don't treat me like a con, huh? Even if I am one. I'll sit down, yeah. I'll have a smoke with you. I'll talk with you. Okay. Okay, have one. Thanks. Uh, It's just that everybody, everybody's doing it. Treating me like that. Even my wife went over to see her the first day I got out. You know what? She wouldn't let me in the house. She gave me $40 and told me to go out and get a decent job. Work hard, she said, and in six months, if everything is okay and you're not in any trouble, you can come home to me and the kids. And if not, she says, I'm going to divorce you. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to say? Offer me a seat. Invite me to sit down. I'm a human being, too. Sure. Thanks again. Well? Boy, I thought about it a lot. You know... If you hadn't been out to get me eight years ago, I, I might have had you over to dinner. Maybe we could have been friends. Yeah, maybe. Now, what's this all about, Vance? Uh, okay. I can't get a job. I'll have to go in business for myself. I need a steak. That's why I called you. Go on. Now, did you do like I, like I asked you to? Look up the Todd case? I called Wilmington about it. There's nothing new happening. I'm happening. That's something new. And I can help. For a price. All right, go on. But I want my name out of the picture. Could you fix that? Probably. But I'd have to talk to the police sooner or later. All I'm asking is your promise to keep my name out of it. Otherwise, it's no go. Well, tell me something about it before I make any promises, Vance. Fair enough. You got a list of the stolen items? Not yet. Won't be here until tomorrow. Now, when it gets here, you'll find it was a mink coat in that lot. I think most of it was jewelry, but it was a mink coat. Labeled from Zellerback Furs in New York... 
And the inside lining carried this serial number, 27356. All right. Take it easy, Vance. Expense account item three, $2.50. Another long-distance phone call to Wilmington and Don Freed, who verified that the serial numbers furnished by Orrin Vance fitted those in the stolen mink coat. I explained how I'd come about the information at hand, leaving out any mention of names. Freed talked with his boss and phoned me back a half an hour later. You can go ahead and work on it, Dollar. There's a $5,000 reward posted. $5,000? We'll split it between you and, uh, and your friend, if anything worthwhile turns up. Okay? Uh, suppose it's nothing. Okay. Swindle sheet, too. All right. Okay, Vance. You're in business. How does it work? You tell me where the coat is and who has it, and I'll handle it from there. If it turns out to be anything, you'll get paid for it. All I've had so far is talk. I'll tell you where the coat is and who has it, but before I do that, you give me a check. What? A check for 2500 You date it two days from now. I'll give you a chance to look into it and see if I know what I'm talking about. And you can stop payment any time within two days if my tip doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I'll have the check and bye-bye. Where to? Homewood, Indiana. My plane leaves in an hour. I may want you around for some questions. No, I'll give you the tip. That's all. You ask somebody else the questions. Well? Okay. What's the matter? You afraid? Sure. Haven't you noticed? I'm a stool pigeon. I noticed, and it worried me. But I arranged for him to have the post-dated check in return for which he gave me a name and an address. Gloria Tierney, 1231 East 57th Street, New York City. Expense account item four, $3, cab fare to the airport. I saw Orrin Vance off on a westbound plane to Indiana. 45 minutes later, I boarded flight 37 for New York. Expense account item five, $18.85. The cost of getting me from Hartford to New York. I checked in at the New Western and went directly to the Metropolitan Police Station where I asked if Gloria Tierney had a record. A check in the police files revealed that she was not listed. About seven o'clock, I had a bite to eat and then I walked over to the 57th Street address, a small apartment building. Hello. I'm looking for Gloria Tierney. Oh, you have the wrong apartments right across the hall. I was over there. No one answered. Well, she must be out. I'm the manager here. Would you like to leave your name? I'm Johnny Dollar, but I wonder if you could tell me where to find her. No, no, I can't, but I'll be glad to give her your name and ask her to call you. Well, that sounds fair enough. I'm at the New Western Hotel. Oh, you're from out of town? Yes. An old friend of Gloria's? No, no, I'm uh, just on business. Well... I'll tell her you came by. Good, fine. By the way, uh, how long has Miss Tierney lived here? Mm, about a year. Why? Oh, I uh, just wondered. Thank you. Johnny Dollar, New Weston Hotel. Oh, uh-huh, that's right. Wait a minute. Here, take my card. Insurance? Sort of. The apartment house manager, it said Ethel Stromberg on the mailbox, smiled politely and closed the door. I went outside the building and took a plant across the street. I waited around for about three hours and saw no one go in or out of the building. I went back to my hotel. About midnight, the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. Hello, Mr. Dollar, please. I'm Mr. Dollar. You left word for me. I'm Gloria Tierney. Oh, yes, Miss Tierney. I intend to leave town, possibly in the morning, so I thought I'd better call you tonight. I hope it isn't too late. Not at all, Miss Tierney. What's it all about, Mr. Dollar? I'm an insurance investigator. I'd rather tell you about it in person. As I said, I expect to leave town tomorrow. Is it important? I think so, yes. Could I see you tonight? Well, I don't know. I could be there in 15 minutes. I don't understand. I'll come right over. Well, all right. I was there in less than 15 minutes, but things weren't all right. As a matter of fact, things looked all wrong. Gloria Tierney's apartment was darkened. She didn't answer when I knocked on the door. I tried it. The door was locked. You who? Hmm? Now, look here. I don't think you have any right to bother Gloria. Oh, it's you. Hello, Mrs. Stromberg. Well, where's Gloria? I don't know. You don't know? She was waiting to meet you. Ah. 
Well, out here in the hallway. She came in tonight, and I gave her your message. And then she went in and called you, and then came back out and said you were coming by. Yeah, well, she's gone. Well, that's funny. Hey, tell me, did you hear anyone out here? No. Well, maybe she went down to the drugstore. Drugstore's closed. Oh, well, yes. Well, she'll probably show up. Yes, probably. You look worried, Mrs. Stromberg. I am. Gloria didn't seem like herself when she came in. Oh, well, what do you mean? Well, she was nervous and upset. I think she'd been crying. I don't know. Uh-huh. Oh, I hope she's all right. Yeah, so do I. You're sure she isn't outside waiting for you? No, I didn't see any. Well, I'll look again. Do you see her? Not a soul. Had she been drinking? No, of course not. What was she wearing, Mrs. Stromberg? Oh, she had her coat on. Her mink coat? Yes. Well, how'd you know about her mink coat? A friend of mine... I'll take a look around out here. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I'll come with you. You know, of course, she might hey, have got... wait a second. Look, is that Gloria? Why, yes, I think so. Something's wrong with her. Yes. The girl crossing the street in the mink coat weaved slightly from side to side. As I got close to her, I could see she was a pretty girl in her late 20s, blonde hair, dark eyes. She hardly looked up as I came up to her. Just stopped and stood there, weaving slightly. Miss Tinney? Yes, yes. Well, can I help you? I'm Johnny Dollar. Please. Oh, come on. We better go inside. Y- yes. What is it? He, he struck me. He, he what? He struck me. And I... Oh, Mr. Dollar. Here, come on. Careful now. Sure. Oh. Easy. Easy now. Thank you. Thank you very much. You okay? Yes, Look out, that car! Uh, what? That car, no! All three slugs had hit her and she fell back into my arms. By the time I could reach for it and get my gun out, the black Cadillac and whoever was driving it were out of sight around the corner. And there'd been no light on the rear license plate. Oh. Easy now, easy. Mr. Dollar, those were oh. shots. What <gasps> Mr. Dollar? Call the police, call the police, quick. But I... Oh. Yes, right away. You know, let's see if we can... Mr. Dollar... Don't try to talk, Gloria. Don't try to move. We'll have help here in a minute. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Todd matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, the same old business of murder but with a brand new twist. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>